Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to use location data or point data of lightning strikes. And lightning strikes are triangulated using a ground-based lightning detector sensor network. So where these yellow marker symbols are, there's a lightning detection sensor. And then basically using triangulation, the location of any lightning strike in Alaska or the Yukon is triangulated. So for example, if a lightning strike is in this location, based on triangulation from a lightning sensor at Kotzebue, Galena, and Bettles, we can accurately locate that lightning strike location. And we can download those point data from the Alaska Fire Service website. So for example, here's a June image of Alaska, and here's all the June 2013 lightning strikes that were detected in Alaska and the Yukon. And it turns out to be over 60,000 lightning strikes. So what we want to do is summarize these lightning strike point locations into a 100 kilometer square density map. So every square that's 100 kilometers wide by one kilometers high, how many lightning strikes were inside that square. And we're going to do that using two methods. One method will be polygon based and the second method will be raster based and we'll get essentially the same results so it's sort of your personal preference on how to do this. Okay so the first method will make our 100 kilometer squares based on our lightning strike data and we'll use the create fishnet tool to do that. Okay so we're going to use the create fishnet geoprocessing tool to create square polygons and the width will be 100,000 meters, so that's 100 kilometers wide, and then 100,000 meters or 100 kilometers for the height. And we don't know how many rows and how many columns, so we'll put a zero and a zero. And then for template extent, we'll use that to be the same as our point data, so the same as the lightning strikes in June 13. And then it will calculate the appropriate extent, and then it will calculate the number of rows and number of columns. And then basically what we're going to do is create polygons from our fishnet, and they'll be called squares 100 kilometer.shp, and then just OK. OK, so basically the fishnet tool created 100 kilometer squares covering the extent of our point cloud. So we had one lightning strike location way out here, uh, lightning strike locations over here. We're really interested in just in the area of Alaska, but that's fine. So now what we'll do is we'll use a spatial join tool to basically say for every square, how many lightning strikes are inside every square. Okay, so our target feature are our squares and what we want to know is for each square how many lightning strikes are inside each square and we'll output to polygon feature class called square count strike count in the squares dot shape and then just OK. So we have an output polygon feature class and that has a field called join count. So that join count field will be how many strikes are inside each polygon and we'll label that join count. So just label features in this layer based on join count and I'll give it a bold 14 point and then just OK. So for example, for this square, there's one lightning strike in this square. And for this square, there's one, two lightning strikes in this square. So now we've got, for each polygon, how many lightning strikes are inside each polygon. So then we could do all sorts of analysis based on this density of lightning strikes per 100 square kilometer polygons. 
Okay, we could do the same thing. Instead of producing uh, square polygons, we could use the point density tool in the spatial analyst toolbox to create an output raster of strike density. And here our output cell size will be 100 kilometers and the neighborhood that it's going to look in will be 100 kilometers high, 100 kilometers wide. So that should give us basically the same information, but this time instead of in polygons, in a raster world. And then just OK. OK, so our output raster has pixel cell size 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers. And we have the density of lightning strikes per square kilometer. So we want to take that density strike per square kilometer times the size of our cells in square kilometers. So we'll use the raster calculator to do that. So take our density raster times 10,000 square kilometers in one pixel and take the integer. So that will give us the strike count within each cell and then just OK. So I'll symbolize this strike count raster so display zeros as black and then we'll have a color ramp going from um, a very cool color to a hot color as our strike count. And then we'll do two standard deviations. So there's our raster and then we'll compare that with our original polygons. So here are our original polygons that we produce using the spatial join tool where we have the count of lightning strikes inside each square. And here's our raster. And then we could use the identify tool. So for this pixel, it has a strike count of five, which matches our original spatial join result. So here are the five lightning strikes. And for this pixel, it has a strike count of one. So basically we have the same information and we have it in polygon format. So each of these fishnet squares are 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers and we have a join count which is the number of lightning strikes inside each square or we have our raster and inside our raster pixels we have the value of the number of lightning strike count inside each pixel. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you that will lead you to the next video session.